It is interesting the things these politicians say to sound wise or be relevant in Canadian society. Their twisted need to seem important has led them to say and do things that would make an average Canadian wonder whether or not such a politician had any bit of common sense. It is awfully disappointing to hear a fellow Canadian who was born and bred in Canada and also happens to be an MP from the new Democratic Party target ice hockey in one of the ongoing political games being played by the Liberals and NDP coalition. This NDP MP is Bonita Zarrillo and the comment she made concerning our national sports ice hockey is as awful as it is angering. In a deleted tweet, she questioned the need for ice rinks for ice hockey and said that the use of the rinks was damaging to the climate. She made this tweet on Wednesday and soon hurried to delete it after she was riddled with public backlash. But then, it was too late. The damage had been done. If the tweet came from a foreigner, I would have shrugged and probably said that such a person doesn't have an inkling of knowledge of what the sport ice hockey means to us. But here we have Zoe Rillo, an MP chosen and elected by Canadians, turning to fight against the culture of those who elected her and, in general, the rest of Canada. I have heard many dumb things these past few days, but this tweet by Zarrillo is probably the dumbest thing I have heard so far. It seems like the NDP is also infected with the stupidity of the Liberals. I mean, how are all these people blind to the fact that there are bigger issues impacting the climate than ice rinks? Trudeau showed the same stupidity when he declared that he would cut down on fertilizer use in a bid to promote his carbon policies. Even when notable agricultural experts warned him of the impact it would have on food production in the country, and even amid the ongoing food crisis facing Canadians, Trudeau is still bent on doing that. But while Trudeau looks to target farmers just like his counterparts in the Netherlands and Britain have done, he still hasn't decided to cut down on the fuel that he burns while going on his multiple travels by air. It was reported that Trudeau's jet travels emitted roughly 85.8 tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere while the average Canadian emits 4.1 tons. You can see the gulf in difference and also the hypocrisy of the Prime Minister here. Still in the case of reckless traveling methods, the National Post Brian Pasifium calculated that in the month of July, Trudeau didn't fly by air for 11 days, meaning that he was on jet travel for 20 days. In those 20 days of his jet travels, Trudeau logged 26,238 kilometers of jet travel. This included a 5,500 kilometers flight to spend six hours at the Calgary Stampede and 62 kilometers hop between Penticton and Kelowna in order to avoid rush hour traffic. According to the Government of Canada's own statistics, the average Canadian semi-truck consumes 39.5 litres of fuel for every 100 kilometres travelled. This means that if Trudeau's 33,000 litres had been pumped into trucks instead of Challenger jets, it could have powered 32 of them on a 2,600 kilometres journey between Regina and Ottawa. There are many more instances where Trudeau had chosen to practice something alternative to what he preached, but this shows how much of a hypocritic this man is. And now, in a bid to follow the Prime Minister's lead, Zarrillo came out to target our national winter sports. To show you clue less she is, the matter which she raised had not even been mentioned by any of our Liberal bosses, not even Trudeau, because it seems like everyone, except herself, understands what the game means to Canadian heritage. Some of you may argue that she didn't call for ice hockey to be banned, but for ice rinks to be removed. Now you tell me, what kind of ice hockey is played without ice? I mean, isn't the fact that it is called ice hockey because it is literally hockey played on ice? In her tweet, she asked if every ice sport can be played without ice. Who does that? Why are they called ice sports in the first place? And if she was so confident in her stupidity, why did she delete the tweet later on and not defend her opinion? At that time, Zaya Rillo also shared a news release from the NHL where the association stated its plan for ice hockey. The release went thus, ice rinks are an important fixture of winter sports, whether for ice hockey, speed skating, curling, ice dancing, or figure skating. But with growing concerns about global warming, water scarcity, and our planet's climate crisis, even the International Olympic Committee, the International Ice Hockey Federation, and the National Hockey League have been considering the environmental issues related to coordinating ice sports events and ensuring energy consumption and rink operating costs are feasible. As a result, there is now a movement towards utilizing synthetic ice on ice rinks. Those were the words used in the release. Ben Woodfin Den, who was a contributor for the National Post, said that a sure way to ignite a full-blown Canadian revolt was to tell people that they couldn't play ice hockey anymore because it affects the climate. These politicians need to understand that there is a limit to anything they utter from their mouths. Michael Diamond, who was a conservative party strategist, also condemned Zarrillo for her bad take on the matter. He mentioned the physical and health consequences of denying Canadians the right to play the sport they want. 
Meanwhile, Toronto businessman Matt Spote took a different angle in condemning Zarrillo. He said that Zarrillo's opinion was a normal thing that was seen among federal politicians. He sarcastically suggested that we ban indoor heating during winter too. If politicians like Zarrillo have nothing to say about climate change or anything, it would be best that they keep their mouths shut for their good and the good of the country. Not every comment is accepted and should be made especially common on a national heritage like ice hockey. What do you think about Zorilla's comment? Please leave your comments in the comments section down below. We would love to hear them. It would be appreciated if you could buy us a cup of coffee to encourage us as we keep hunting for the truth to bring to you on this channel. You can do so by clicking the thanks button below. We would appreciate that. Also, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't yet. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Please share our videos too so they can reach more people who need to know the truth. Thanks for watching.